How cute. Today we're going to focus on a bundle that is in the new mini catalog and it is on page 11. It includes a stamp set that is called Love and Happiness with a lot of really nice sentiments. And then also included in the bundle is a really cool combination of an embossing folder. And we're gonna be using this quite a bit so you'll get familiar with it. And it's called a hybrid embossing folder because it also comes with a set of dies. And one of the dies in particular, the large heart, is used with the embossing folder to cut and emboss at the same time. And it's really fun. I will, I will tell you, I've had a lot of fun playing around with the stamps, the embossing folder, the die. And the card on the left is the one that we're really going to concentrate on and replicate. But I wanted to show you how versatile the parts are. The card on the right honestly doesn't have all Stampin' Up! stuff. Um, the little parts that are on the stems are not Stampin' Up! I will tell you when I send this and when I post it, I'll put a link into the die that I used to cut these out. They're completely the same color and I just used a marker to color in the heart. But I did use the standalone heart from the folder that I just showed you. I just put this really simple card together. But today what I want to pay a lot of attention to and show you some tips and tricks on is how to use the hybrid embossing folder. That's going to be the biggest thing that we're going to focus on. And then I'm going to share with you if you don't have the hybrid embossing folder, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to make a very similar looking card with an embossing folder that I bet you have in your collection already. But let's first take a look. Let's let me pull the embossing folder back and I'm going to take out the die that is used with the embossing folder. And I want to show you what you can do with this. And this isn't anything extraordinary. It's really pretty logical. If you use the embossing folder by itself, if you don't put the die cut or the die in, you're going to get a really nice embossed image. And around that heart, you're going to see, hopefully it shows up on the camera, you see an outline of a heart as well. But what I like about it is you have a really rich, deep embossed image, then you've got a sort of a flat heart, and then you have the embossed image on the other side. So you can use this just like a regular embossing folder. It is a 3D embossing folder. Or if you put the cutting die in here, and the way that you do that is if you look at the embossing folder and you see where Stampin' Up! is shown, this is going to be the side that goes on the top. That means that when you put your die in, you want to put your blade facing away from stamp where, where it says Stampin' Up! So I'm gonna flip that embossing folder over and I would actually put the die in so that the blade is facing me. And then I would put my paper in, run this through the embossing machine, and let me show you what you get as a result. So with the magic of pre-doing this, this is what it looks like. So you get a really pretty design and you get a gorgeous heart that is separate. And that's exactly what I used here when I created this separate part on this card. And I use the same technique to create this card. So let me just kind of walk you through this. And I want to give you a couple of tips and tricks that will help you, I think, 
when you're using this kind of hybrid embossing folder so that you get the results that you want and you really enjoy using these. And they really are a lot of fun. So let me show you a couple things that are tips and tricks that I would just suggest that you, you kind of think about. And I bet as you go along, you are going to find that there are others that you're going to realize on your own. This is a great tool for this kind of folder. And this is, it's called the Stamparatus Deluxe Foam Mat. I like it because it has multiple purposes. I can use it in my Stamparatus. I can use it standalone. And the biggest thing that this provides for me is a grid. And it provides me something that I can use just as a kind of like a, a platform. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of copy paper to the size of the paper that I'm gonna put through the embossing folder. And I've chosen to use the size of four by four. The reason I wanted to do four by four is when I put that on the final card, if I have a width of four, I'm gonna have a little bit more area on each side. This is actually larger in height than four inches. So the card I'm gonna show you, is gonna be a little bit different than this one, but that's okay. You'll see another way that you can use the folder. So what, I'm, what I've done is I've cut out a piece of paper to four by four. This is the one that I'm gonna put through the embossing folder. In order for me to kind of get things lined up, this will make sense in a minute. I've cut this copy paper to four by four and I've just put it down on a grid paper. If you have a piece of, of grid paper or something that you can use other than the foam mat, go for it, it'll be fine. What this is going to do, what this paper is going to do is going to give me a visual idea of where I need to lay this piece to get it centered the way I want it so that when I run my piece through, I'll have the heart in the middle-ish. I'm not gonna get super, super picky, but this will help me. So let me just refresh you on the way this is oriented. If I look at where Stampin' Up! is, I'm gonna flip that over. So I'm kind of looking at it like it's at the back of the embossing folder. I'm gonna open up my embossing folder and then the, the actual die is going to go into, it really does fit in, it's like a little puzzle piece. It just fits where it needs to go. And the blade is facing toward me because I'm going to put the paper right on top of that. So I've got this great ability now to try to get that heart visually in the center and when I get it to the point where I like it, I'm going to take the piece of paper that I'm going to run through the embossing folder. And let me hold this straight while I do this. So let's just say that that's, that's pretty much where I want it to be. I'm just gonna put my paper right over that copy paper. So that copy paper is giving me the outline of where I need to put the piece of paper that I'm going to run through. Then I can close the embossing folder, maybe press from where the, the fold is just to hold that paper in. And then I can bring this over to my embossing machine. Remember it's a 3D embossing folder, so you're gonna need that special plate on the top. And then I'm gonna run that through the embossing machine. And what I will get, is this. This is the image that is going to come out. And I obviously did that before starting up the, the meeting today, but trust me, that is the process that I used. So that's a really easy way to get this aligned where you want it to go. And then you're gonna have two absolutely gorgeous pieces 
that you can use together or you can use apart. Well, let's take a look at the example because what you're going to see is there are two colors that are working in this design. And I've used a little bit of a deeper pink. This was much lighter in the example. That's fine. We're going, we're choosing, and we're going to do another card so it will look different. That means I need another piece. And in this case, for the card that we're going to do, I would do the exact same thing. This is four by four. I would run it through in the exact same way that I just showed you on the other piece. And as a result, I'm going to get these two pieces. And they are stunning as well. This is Cherry Cobbler. This is, and I apologize, I thought this was still available. It is Rococo Rose. And it's a very, very, very pretty color. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, but um, we do have some colors that will work just as well. So now what's really nice is, you know, we can interchange these. We can put the hearts in the middle and the color combination is what we're going for here. The way that I get the white washed look on the top is I took a little stamping cube similar to the size that are in the paper pumpkins. You can get um, uninked ones out of the Stampin' Up! catalog. And I used white craft ink. And then I simply, I'll show you, I simply took that ink pad and pulled it over the top of the images. And I suggest that if you're not familiar with doing this, you might want to take you know, a scrap of paper and run it through the embossing folder and then just test it. And I'll, I'll show you what it would look like on this test. What I do is I just put the paper right down and I'm doing direct to paper. I'm going to add the ink directly on, onto the paper. And what's going to happen is when that craft ink first goes on, it's going to look pretty bright, but as it dries, it's going to look a little bit more dull. And you can probably see that that's happening as I'm adding the ink. So I'm going to come back over. I'm going to do this kind of quickly. You can add more after you've put the card together if you want to. And this gives it just a really fun, antique-ish look. Um, you can use different colors as well. You can use metallics. You can also do some fun things if you put some Versamark and then come back with some embossing powder. You could do some metallic embossing on this and you would have a really, really fun design when you're done. And it doesn't take a long time to do. Um, and I invite you to, to try some different colors. It would be fun to put some darker pinks on, on this particular piece. So the design will show a little bit more. You could also do tone on tone and see what that looks like. And I am going to, I'm working forward and getting a couple of pieces prepped as I'm doing this, which will make sense in, in just a minute, but I'm just wanting to show you, you know, how quick this is. One thing about craft ink, if you haven't used it before, be aware that it takes longer to dry than regular ink. And you are going to want to set these pieces aside while you continue to work on the project or if you are impatient and you would really like to have everything drying fairly quickly, grab your heat tool and you can set that. As this dries, like I mentioned, that white is going to get lighter and lighter and you can go back and add more if you want to. But I'm just going to put those to the side for a moment. 
when we started this, I mentioned that you don't need to have the hybrid embossing die folder to create something that will look similar to this. And I want to show you how you can create something with a, an embossing folder that I bet you already have. And let me show you the steps. This is what we're going to end up making. And it's going to be very, very similar in terms of the way that the card will look, but it is not made with the embossing folder that we just looked at. It is made with an embossing folder that I pulled out of my stash. This is the Country Floral 3D embossing folder. I purposely picked this kind of embossing folder because I wanted some really bold designs. I didn't necessarily want the, the subtle backgrounds or ones that have very small designs. I wanted something big because if you'll notice here, this embossing folder has some really large flowers and they're not in a pattern. They really are distinct and standalone. And this particular embossing folder has some really, really bold designs. So it was a great choice. And I'm sure you will find something like this in your stash. So how do you get here? Well, the steps involved in getting to this point where you have a really beautiful embossed image and I hope you can see, it would be easier if this were already done in the white, but you can see that the design is completely aligned. The leaves, the petals on that flower, the leaves are perfect. This flower is perfect. It all is aligned, but it's coming from two different pieces of paper. There are a couple of tips and tricks that I wanted to show you how to do this to make it work. And I'm gonna pull this back in as a starting point. And I chose to use a die that had a heart shaped, as you can see. And I literally just pulled the heart die from the embossing folder that was used to create this piece. So it's from the hybrid embossing folder that we just used. You can use any shape you want, circles, squares, triangles, it doesn't matter. Any shape will work with this. The first thing you need to do if you are going to create something that will get you to result that will have the, the images aligned perfectly, the first thing you need to do is die cut your pieces. Here's why. If I ran a piece of paper, let's say I took a piece of this paper. Again, this is four by four. Let's say that I put that into my embossing folder and I ran it through. What I'm gonna get is a beautiful image that's embossed. And then if I took that to my die cut machine, and put the die on the top and ran that through, it's very likely that I'm going to flatten out some of the area where I embossed. That's the first thing. And then if I'm trying to get two pieces of paper, in this case, a darker red and a pink, so that the embossed images line up exactly where I want them to be, good luck with that. It's near to impossible. But here's what you need to do. Grab a piece of paper. If you use your little cheat sheet that you had already on the other one, so this again is a four by four piece of copy paper. I'm just going to lay my four by four cardstock over that. And then I'm going to take my die and I'm going to figure out where I want that die cut to be. And one nice thing about putting it onto a grid is that visually you can do your best to kind of line it up in the middle. I'm trying to get that, the V at the top and the point at the bottom to line up as best as I can. 
with the middle, that line right there. And when I'm happy with where that heart is located, I'm going to grab a post-it note or some washi tape that has a lot of the stickiness off. And I'm just gonna post-it note the die to that piece of paper. I'm gonna run over to my die cutting machine and through the magic of getting prepared ahead of time, this is what I'm going to end up with. So I'm going to have these two pieces and that is simply a die cut, running that through and having the, the die. Easy peasy, right? Something we've done a bazillion, bazillion times in the past. Well, if I want to have an end result that allows me to have two pieces or two colors, I need to do the same thing, the exact same thing with the cherry cobbler. So pretend that I did that because I just showed you the steps. I would cut out a piece of cherry cobbler in four by four. I would align it on my little mat. I would run it through and I would end up with these two pieces. And I started with these two. Brilliant. So we're, we're getting there, but we still need to get to this point. So to get to this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my dark colored heart over here into the middle of the lighter pink, and I'll do the opposite over here. All right, so for all intent and purpose, we now have the pieces that we need to run through the embossing folder, and this is what we would do. I'm gonna get out that embossing folder that I chose, and I am going to take the darker outline of the, the heart and kind of put it in. What's also nice about this is it doesn't have a vertical or horizontal. You don't have to get crazy about getting things perfectly aligned. I'm going to put that lighter color pink in the middle. I'm going to close it. I'm gonna bring this over to my embossing machine. And when I come out and I have the result, this is what I'm going to have. I'm going to have two independent pieces that will have that design absolutely lined up perfectly. So that trick or tip is something that you can use on anything, anything that you do. You can, you know, think about it. You could put multiple shapes and have different color, I'm making this up, but different color balloons or different um, flowers or who knows what, different letters, different shapes that would be turned into areas where you could even put in sentiments on the inside. Different color hearts. I could put multiple hearts. I could use smaller, smaller hearts in terms of size, do a lot of different cuts, and then I could um, have different color inserts that would go along as well. So there are just there are a lot of different ways that you can use this technique. And it's a pretty quick and easy way to get a kind of a, a faux hybrid embossing slash die folder die cut result. And just like I did on the other, where we do have the hybrid embossing folder, I am just coming back with some white craft ink and just giving that a little bit of a kind of a white shadow. And you're gonna see when I pop this back into the middle, that now that we've got the white ink on the top, you're going to see how perfectly aligned the design is. See how that aligns just perfectly? Because this, these two pieces were run together as one piece through that embossing folder. 
And I am going to ink these up as well because we're going to use these in just a minute to actually put the card together. So these are just scrap pieces. They are four inches wide. I think they're about an inch long. They're the color of the inside part. And what I did is I just ran those through the same embossing folder to get some texture and a similar design. We're gonna use this as part of the card. Trying to hold that lid open. And I'm just gonna give that a little bit more. All right. So let me bring these back in and I just wanna show you how similar, I know the embossing folders are different, which means the designs are different. But if you look at these side by side, they're very similar in terms of results. So you can really look at the embossing folders that you have in a very different way and expand them. The sky's the limit on this one. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to start building the card. And I wanted to show you a, a trick that I know you know, but it's one that we don't do an awful lot. And that is, you can alter the sentiments that you have in stamps. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. When I made the example card, I wanted to just say, Happy Valentine's Day. And if you look through these sentiments, there's not one that actually says just Happy Valentine's Day. This is the stamp that I ended up using. And you can see that it says Happy Valentine's Day, friend. There are a couple ways that people modify stamps. Some people will literally cut them. So somebody might literally cut that friend off and then have two separate stamps that could be put back together if they wanted to stamp that complete sentiment. I don't know why, but I don't like to do that. I prefer to use the marker method. And what I have done for the card that I'm going to put together in just a second is I put the stamp on my Stamparatus and I used a black marker and I used the brush end. I find that it's easier to do this technique with a brush end. And I went in and I literally inked up the part of the stamp that I wanted to use. So I purposely avoided the friend sentiment and I purposely avoided that little comma after the word day. And I simply put ink from the marker onto the sentiment parts that I wanted and then put that into the Stamparatus and stamp down. And as a result, this is what I got. So that is going to be on the bottom right of my card front. And that can be a really fun trick or tip to have because you can look at your sentiments in a very different way and come up with some really unique combinations that can be very handy in making different cards. The base for the card is a thick basic white. It's cut to eight and a half by five and a half. I just scored it at four and a quarter on the eight and a half inch side. And I am just going to come back in and give that a good burnish. And then I'm going to start building the card. And I'm going to do it somewhat similarly to this with the tearing. And the way I'm going to start this is I'm going to grab the piece. This is the one that I did with the hybrid embossing folder. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to start building the layers that will go on the edges. One of those layers is a simple piece of basic black cardstock. This is cut to four inches wide by half an inch. And the only real measurement that I really care about is the four inches because I want it to be the same width as the piece that I ran through 
the embossing folder. And I'm gonna use this super, super technical tool called Scotch Tape to put that piece on. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna turn the um, black piece over. I'm going to put a piece of Scotch Tape so that some of the sticky is exposed. And then I'm turning it back over so the sticky is sticking up at me. And I'm going to look straight down at this and try to get it kind of corner to corner where I want it to be. And it doesn't need to be precise. It would help if I actually push where I need to push. We'll get that back on there. Try to get it kind of straight and then just push it. And now that it's on there, I can take my glue and just glue it down a tad. I don't need to do too much here. This isn't really gonna be where the final card is gonna have any um, adhesion working. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I just have a little stack of these pieces already cut. So again, they're four inches by half an inch and you can modify it to whatever size you want if you like this design. And then when I put this other piece on, I'm gonna try to get the same amount of black showing on this side. So I'm just gonna come down, kind of eyeball that, and then push it down. And then use some glue. Don't even have to go all the way across if I don't want to and come back over. The next layer that I'm going to add to this is meant to be visually sort of to look like this heart is almost underneath the red and it's continuing past the black edge. So I know that at the end, I'm going to be putting in the pink heart right in the middle, which means that I want to use these pink edges that I colored with my white ink before to be the final border. These are the ones that I said that I was cheating. I was, I knew where I was going with this. And I, when I was doing the, adding the craft ink, I went ahead and added it to these. These are four inches wide by about an inch. And again, you can make them um, whatever height you want. The important thing, at least if you wanted to make something similar to this, is to have the layers the same width so that they all work together. And what I did on the, these is I, I tore the edges. And you'll remember, if you tear toward you, you're going to see the fibers of the paper. So I'm just going to tear this and it, it doesn't matter if it's straight. It, the fact is that since it's been embossed, you're gonna have a hard time tearing it straight because there are going to be little parts in the design as you go across that are going to force that tear to go in certain directions. And I'm just gonna take the other one that I did and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna tear it right, right across and kind of allow it to do whatever it's gonna do. And the nice thing about this is if it looks, if it doesn't look purposeful, it's I think gonna look a little bit a little bit better. Then I'm gonna get that white ink back out. And this is an optional thing if you want to. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of white ink to that torn edge. And by the time this dries, you may not even see it. It's one of those things you're gonna know if you do this, that you did it. And I bet when the card is done, it's not gonna look a lot different than it would if you had skipped this step. So I'm just gonna add that white and I think it's kind of cool. It adds a little bit of a kind of bohemian 
cheeky look to it. And the one thing, if you do like here, there's a lot of fiber that you can see. I'm just gonna come back in and add a little bit more ink right there, just so it has a little bit more contrast. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the black pieces, where I will flip the pink pieces over. I'm going to use a piece of tape, just like I did on the other ones. And this time, before I commit to this, I'm going to kind of test and see how much room I have. Because on this card, I've got a sentiment down at the bottom. And I just want to make sure that I am not going to have an issue. Have an issue with do one quick thing here. The computer's telling me that the battery is running low. All right. Yay. So I just need to make sure that I know how much room I have on the edges. And I think it's going to be about right there ish. Okay. So I'm going to come back over. And I'm going to add that pink edge, give it a little push. Same, same thing that I did before. And then I'll do the other side. And once you have your pieces together, ready to go, this is a, a pretty quick kind of design. And it, in my opinion, is a, a nice little visual with the, um, a lot of embossing, but it really does work together really well. So we'll come in here and glue that one down as well. All right, let's see what damage we've done. Ooh, I like it. Okay, so we are going to end up attaching this piece to the front of the card. But I wanna make one more suggestion before you do that. When we've added these additional layers in the back, we've added depth to the card. So if I were to put this right on the front like this, and then I attach the heart, that heart is going to sink into the back. Now, if that's what you want it to look like, you're golden. You can put it in there and then the, the piece in the front is going to look like, and it will be raised up a little bit. It's up to you if you want it to look like that. If you don't want it to look like that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a piece of cardstock and it doesn't have to be perfectly cut, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is to just put that right behind the opening of your heart. And it's going to give kind of a fake piece of cardstock that that card, the heart will get attached to. So it's gonna lift that heart to the same level as the front. And if you put it in that way, these two pieces, the, the heart and the background are gonna be on the same level. So you have two options. I am going to attach this so that they are on the same level. So I'm putting in this little piece of cardstock just right in the back. And I'm just gonna attach it with tape. It doesn't matter because it's going to end up getting some Tombow glue in just a couple of seconds. So it will stay where it needs to stay. 
And then I'm going to put the heart onto that little bridge that I built. And I'm gonna put the Tombow on the bridge because that's where it's going to get attached. So again, this is a choice that you have if you want it to look like it's at the same height as the background, put a little bridge in there. If you want it to look like it's on the card front, then leave that off. And it's a good idea to make your bridge the same color as your card front, just so that there's not, a, it, it doesn't have a chance of, of being visible. And when you're happy with your piece, you can just put some glue on the composite background, all the piece parts that you put together. It looks like a mess from the back, but from the front, it's kind of fun. And then I'm looking on the left side and the right side to try to get that as straight as I can. The beauty of this design is that there's really no straight line on the top or on the bottom. It's just all working together. Now, if I wanted to, I can take my white craft ink and I can go back in and I can add some more of that ink at this point. And it's really up to you if you wanted to put any kind of additional color into your design. And then I'm going to add some bling and I will mirror the bling that I used on this card. I'll put some rhinestones in and probably won't put a, a bow. I think this would, the card on the right would have a little bit too much going on if I used a bow. But you can see that the essential design is the same on each of these. The way that the backgrounds were created are exactly the same because I use the hybrid embossing folder and the die that comes with the, the folder, these two. And that's how that was constructed. Now it would be very easy to envision a card that would be used or made with the pieces that we cut that were not using the hybrid embossing folder, but using what I had in my stash. And if I just kind of line these up visually and put them side by side, you're going to see that you can create something that is very, very similar to the card on the left. And you're going to have many more options because you can use any shape that you want to in the middle, the actual die cut. You can use multiple die cuts and come up with some really, really pretty combinations. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I really, really hope that you will go and look at your embossing folders and the dies that you have that cut shapes, because I think you're going to find that there are some really cool things that you can do and make some beautiful cards in ways that you hadn't even thought of. So enjoy, and I would love to see what you make.